Afghanistan and Pakistan's first ever T20 series is just around the corner. The three games will be played on the 24th, 26th and 27th of March. Afghanistan have only announced an initial preparation squad, whereas Pakistan have already announced their final squad for this series. Our guest today is Devinder Kumar. Devinder is a cricket commentator and expert who I'm sure has a lot to say about both the positions. Um, talking about squads, Devinder, uh, the Pakistani chairman, the Pakistan Cricket Board chairman, made some really interesting comments in the squad announcement press conference. Um, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, you know, it's something that has built a lot of controversy um, before the series even begin. Well, he is an experienced campaigner. He has been a journalist and politician as well. And uh, psycho psychological ploy, they play a major part in deciding the outcome of many matches. It's part of, you know, just uh, pricking the skin of the Afghans just before getting into the competition and making them think something different. That is not there. That's the main reason behind it. And also, it reflects the culture of, from where they come. So uh, we cannot complain much about who is saying what because it's it's their understanding about the situation, how they view the world. It's a different thing. It's their opinion. It's not our opinion. And uh, from my experience of watching Afghanistan cricket and, uh, and commentating on Afghanistan cricket, I can tell you that uh, and, and with the interactions that I had with the match referees, uh, more often than not, they told me that Afghan are the most honest and uh, respectful uh, people on the, uh, on the planet when it comes to cricketing affairs. And uh, that's what I, I, I believe that they are honest people and uh, they never ill behave with anyone. Unless you do something to them, then the reaction is always stronger than you expect. Uh, as we witnessed, you know, when Australia decided to not uh, uh, come to UAE to play against Afghanistan, the, the response was brutal. And that's how they describe the Australians. So uh, un until unless you don't do anything to Afghans, they're not going to react uh, badly. But uh, if you are doing something, then uh, expect a bigger response than you can even imagine in the wildest world. So I believe that it's just a psychological trick uh, that the uh, chairman is using uh, to make Afghans uncomfortable. And, uh, and he's someone who is very good at generating headlines because he's been a journalist. You know, there's, there's always some sort of uh, negative connotations associated whenever these two teams face, uh, you know, you're looking at the previous contests. Um, uh, do you think such a responsible or, if I say, uh, you know, one-sided comment that too from a senior official, um, you know, helps the situation or makes it worse? Because you would expect at least the officials um, talk in a manner that, uh, you know, uh, promotes friendship and togetherness among the, the, the players and the fans. Uh, how do you look at that? I mean, balancing um, the, his comments to, to, to his position, do you think it was a, um, a sensible or wise thing that he did? So it, it was not sensible because Afghanistan is experiencing turbulent politically and also cricket-wise as well. As the ICC meeting is, is going underway at the moment, it, it's underway. Uh, the Afghan issue will be discussed on Monday. Uh, so a lot is happening. So Afghanistan cannot respond, you know, directly to what uh, Nazan Sethi has said because uh, they will require the support of Pakistan in the ICC meeting uh, when it comes to discussing about a test membership or, or other issues related to Afghanistan cricket. At a time when uh, Afghanistan is struggling on all fronts, it's, uh, it's important that you show your human side, uh, not, not the brutal side of yours. And uh, I think it was a very, very irresponsible comment uh, from someone who's leading uh, the Pakistan cricket board, Pakistan cricket team has always been, you know, uh, one of the top nations when it comes to, uh, you know, performing at global stage and also sending the message uh, across the globe. But uh, uh, this is not in good taste, and uh, we feel we feel hurt, you know, as Afghan supporters or or, or, or in, in in the world cricket as well, because uh, this is this is not something that we expect from people in top positions. Uh, uh, who are responsible for providing or creating good atmosphere, uh, rather than you know, you know, sending you know, waves that uh, that cause disturbance and and mental irritation. Well, absolutely, as you said, um, the t the two teams uh, rivalry is fast growing and it has reached its peak at times. But when you when you see the players on the field, it actually maintains and stays there. When they come off the field, they're quite friendly and and, and you know um, have. Uh, that, that mutual respect for each other, um, and let's hope the the, offic the officials and the fans, um, you know, maintain maintain that and act in a, an according uh, manner. Uh, coming to Afghanistan squad, um, as mentioned, they haven't yet announced their final squad, but you know there is a initial preparation camp currently underway in the UAE. 
uh, you said yourself you're following Afghan cricket quite closely over the years and uh, you know have done significant work in that um, area um, is there anyone you know there's, there's quite a few new faces in the squad is there anyone particularly that kind of um, you know impressed you over the years or that you want to really see in the final 15 uh, member squad now this is a big series and the focus would be on using experience uh, uh, or or they got you know plenty of spinners in the afghanistan rank who can trouble the batters world around but this is a significant series the three t20 internationals and afghanistan has gone very close to beat pakistan in the asia cup mm. uh, so the focus would be on picking the experienced campaigners uh, those who are available in the side and those who have been performing well in the net sessions uh, all the players who play for various leagues will, uh, will get picked automatically because of their experience and uh, and the way they've been performing uh, i think this time around the focus would be on experience delivering the performances and uh, since nabi has been uh, you know neglected from various franchises and uh, he is determined there's a burning desire the way i show the videos of him preparing in the camp uh, i think he's someone who's going to hold the key from a pension perspective especially in the batting department because uh, if he bats at number 4 position uh, he has got the experience of playing in variety of conditions and the type of bowling uh, that uh, that we can expect from pakistan uh, so i expect him to deliver a, a good performance maybe could be the man of the series for afghanistan uh, ibrahim jadran uh, he has been batting consistently well uh, for uh, for Afghanistan in Asia Cup for in the ICC T20 World Cup in in Australia and then the way he played in the ODI series against Sri Lanka and Gurbaz has been getting runs but he hasn't been consistent so Afghanistan would expect that he delivers at least one match winning performance and uh, then Najibul Azadran as we know that he's a match winner so the top order if if the top order delivered the performance then Afghanistan uh, will win the series but uh, if they they lose wickets early on and then it's going to be difficult because uh, middle order hasn't been tested and and haven't been living up to the expectation so in the lower order we got the batsman in najibulla jadran and also rashid khan who could finish the games well so it, it depends you, you on how a very a very good point experience you know the series being the very first of its kind you would expect both teams to you know uh, go with their stronger sides but you know pakistan seems to have a, you know adopted a whole new approach they have rested all their senior players and the players who normally perform better against uh, against afghanistan they have uh, you know went with most of um, their, their their players in the squad being new or uncapped um how do you see that did they surprise you in any way or what do you think is the thought behind that no it has uh, surprised me because there is always higher expectation when babar azam and rizwan playing for afghanistan uh, sorry so, so, for pakistan so they wanted to take that expectation out out of the way because uh, there is always this worry because afghanistan has been contesting well and challenging pakistan big time and, and there is a worry that they might beat them so they just wanted to take a uh, couple of senior pros out of the team just to less of the the level of expectation from the players and second thing is that babar azam and rizwan have been performing that's all right but the strike rates have always been a point of discussion and i think the new players coming through in harish and uh, Uh, Shan Mashood and also uh, uh, Ayub, uh, who is an attacking batsman. So I think the new look Pakistan batting lineup is 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 more dangerous than the previous uh, experienced uh, campaigners because uh, that's where they will play with freedom, a lot of freedom, and that gives them little advantage in the batting department for Pakistan. And also they found a couple of outstanding bowlers and uh, those who have been performing well in the PSL, uh, Jaman Khan. we saw how well he performed in a pressure situation in the final over uh, yesterday and uh, in ashanola they found a gem bowls at 150 and it's got whippy action can get the uh, batsman you know into into double mind can trouble them with the pace as well and has got uh, the delivery that comes back into the batsman at a good pace and can trap the batters in front so uh, they got quality batters uh, quality bowlers uh spin bowler shino sadat khan has always been a match winner he plays the role kind of role that rashid khan plays for afghanistan mm-hmm. and he's leading the char- charge as well this time around uh, so it's going to be good battle between the two skippers rashid khan and sadat khan and uh, plus uh, they got imad wasim back and uh, nawaz khan the left arm spinner so i think afghanistan can deal with the spinners quite effectively the the amount of ammunitions that they have in their own camp 
so they're well prepared to treat the spinners the way they want to treat but fast bowlers will certainly challenge and that's where i think the preparation of the pitch is going to be key mm. you mentioned about the preparation of the pitches and afghanistan has an upper hand hosting the series um uh, looking at both squads you know afghanistan well obviously is spin heavy but pakistan seem to have thought of that as well what sort of pitches do you think will um, afghanistan go for considering their own spin attack and then the opposition yeah the first thing uh, we have to understand the pattern of the psl you know they will be scoring uh, heavily the openers and top order batsmen uh, the pitches have been uh, quite batting friendly in psl so they are in that kind of rhythm now mm -hmm. we have to do two things as a, as, a, as a afghanistan uh, team management about finding the pitches that can neutralize the effect of the pakistan batters and bowlers and at the same time suit the afghan spinners uh, and and also if if you look at the the batting unit as well afghanistan batters they sometimes they bat in certain flow and then they all the batters have different flow about their bat batting uh, approach uh, and when it comes to pakistan all the batters uh, more more often than not you find them you know stroke makers all the way through uh, to challenge uh, or to break that pattern from pakistan batters and also neutralize the fast bowling of pakistan it's important to prepare the kind of pitches that suit afghanistan and that's a slow low pitches and that's been the nature of the pitches at the shard the cricket stadium since they uh, they relayed the surfaces some time back uh, we, as we witnessed in the pre previous editions of the ipl and and in the asia cup as well that at shard the pitches have been very very supportive for the spinners is slow low and uh, inconsistent when it comes to pace and bounce so that's something that's the recipe uh, for disaster for pakistan and recipe for success for afghanistan absolutely um, you drew a very interesting comparison between rashid and uh, shadab earlier i'll come back to shadab but uh, rashid you know he uh, came back as the t20 skipper um, uh, how do you see that decision uh, in present circumstances uh, it was the best possible decision because it's not about tactical awareness and tactical things on the field or 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 making the team win at the same time it's about pulling off all the things around the cricket as well the financial support they needed a role model like india had role model in sachin tendulkar he was not the best captain but uh, they appointed him captain to draw the market in and that, that's what afghanistan has done uh, in appointing rashid khan because he's well recognized figure in world cricket he's a champion uh, spin bowler and he is he's been improving as a batter as well uh, and the amount of experience that he has playing with various franchises will help you know imparting that knowledge to the uh, to the players playing in their rank and uh, and help afghanistan boost uh, their image uh, as, as a cricketing nation at the same time bringing out that competitive spirit that they naturally inherit the afghans well nabi as you mentioned is probably the most experienced in the current squad how important is his role you know as a supporting skipper maybe behind the scene and um, supporting rashid in this important um, encounter against pakistan yeah all the players chip in that's a good thing about afghanistan uh, it's it's always in the brother brotherhood you know great atmosphere in afghanistan team whenever they take the field they support each other and that's been the history you know under azgar afghan we saw how well Afghanistan developed as a T20 international side. Uh, we experienced a little bit of blip, you know, change in captaincy. Nabi was made captain, Gulbuddin was captain for a brief period of time, and uh, then now Rashid back in, and everybody knows that he's going to be captaining the side for a long time in T20 version of the game. And uh, with Rashid Khan, one thing that we expect is a fierce determination and mm -hmm. also intensity on the field, and that's what he demanded when. Uh, they did not perform up to the expectation against the uae recently at uh, abu dhabi uh, so uh, rashid khan is a fierce uh, character is is competitive uh, and, and a great energy that he brings to the side i think the side will feel inspired by his presence and uh, and, and they, he will receive good support from everyone around him uh, pakistan too has a new skipper in the form of uh, shadab khan uh, you briefly uh, touched upon that earlier um he obviously led a successful uh, team in, in in the PSL um which means he's experienced but do you think there are or there were other experienced candidates you know uh, players with the similar experience but more success rate in captaincy you know normally in cricketing circle you know that uh, they can, they, the guy who's who's been uh, vice captain for uh, quite some time for pakistan so they continue with them as we witnessed with kl rahul as well despite his poor form Uh, but Shadab Khan has been appointed because they wanted to uh, give rest to uh, Shaheen Shah Afridi. 
and uh, also to Babar Azam and Rizwan. So there was no you know, better option, to be honest, uh, uh, in current scenario apart from Sadaf Khan. And uh, and I think it's it's not a, not a big surprise to anyone because that's what he's been doing for quite some time. Vice captaincy and then now captaincy has come naturally to him. Uh, in T Twenty series, you know, there come comes a moment when you need to uh, think on your feet and you need to make a decision in crucial situations. Will Afghanistan be able to put Pakistan under pressure? Now that's where his captaincy will be tested, because uh, you know acting as a vice captain is a different thing. You, anybody can give suggestion to the captain, but when the pressure is on, and can he make good decisions for Pakistan? I, I think it's going to be a litmus test for Sadaf Khan as well, and and the kind of pitches that I expect at the Shah Jahan Cricket Stadium. I think it's going to be a very very close encounter, and uh, there will be many pressure moments, and that's where. Uh, maybe his inexperience of captaining Pakistan team uh, will be exposed. I uh, just wanted to briefly touch upon the strengths of both sides. You know, if Afghanistan is going over the line in the series, what are their main strengths and similar for Pakistan? When it comes to Afghanistan, I think uh, lower order batting has always been fruitful and they've been able to utilize the last four to five overs well, always well. Uh, and uh, also the spin bowling, uh, um, you know, the trial, Rashid Khan. And Nabi and Muzibur Rahman, I think Muzib's role is going to be crucial because Pakistan has got attacking batsmen at the top of the order and Muzib bowls in the power play overs. And mostly in these kind of conditions, you have to bat differently. Normally what you do, you, you score normal runs in the power play overs, then look to consolidate the proceeding and, and accelerate in the last four to five overs, keeping wickets in hand and acceleration. But uh, at Sharjah, as the pitch plays the best in the first four or five overs. So you need attacking batsmen in looking to take down the opposition bowling attack, uh, break their rhythm. And that's where, you know, we got the batsmen in Afghanistan rank in uh, Ibrahim, Jadran and Gurbaz. And I think they should be opening the batting more often than not. You find Hazitullah Jazai coming in there, mixing up with them right and left in combination. Uh, but if they want, you know, uh, you know, good attacking options, then I think Ibrahim, Jadran and Gurbaz, because uh, Ibrahim can rotate the strike and Gurbaz can attack from the world coup. Uh, that's that's a better way. Afghanistan has got the potential at the top of the order, but they've been inconsistent. Middle order haven't got many opportunities of late, uh, but they got uh, players with experience. Uh, they understand the situation. They can come good. Uh, and uh, bowling unit, fast bowling can be can be challenged against Pakistan because uh, Fazal Farooq is very good with the new ball, but can he bowl well in the death overs? That is a you know cause for concern. And also, Naveen Ulak has been bowling. Um, inconsistently. Sometimes he delivers good spell and sometimes he goes for runs. Uh, so pass bowling is something that's an area of concern apart from the new ball with with, uh, with that, you know, Fazil can make early in roads. Uh, spin bowling attack, world class. There is no comparison. With, you know, even Pakistan cannot compete in the spin department. Uh, they got the talent at the top of the order in Afghanistan unit, but they need to translate into performance in the upcoming series uh, where they will be facing a quality opposition. When it comes to Pakistan, uh, the inclusion of youngsters at the top of the order, that's going to give freedom to Pakistan batters to ex express themselves. And naturally, it suits the temperament of those batsmen to play aggressively at the top of the order. They got Itkar Emma, uh, uh, who has been in a red hot form, uh, not only in PSL before that, in the ICC T20 World Cup in in. Uh, Australia and he's played in the Shpagiza Cricket League last time around. So he's, he's got a fair idea how the Afghans bowl and bat and what is their approach towards the game as well. Also, they got Umar Gul in the opposition rank, so uh, who spent considerable amount of time with the Afghan fast bowlers. So he understands not only the bowling style and, and other things, uh, also the psychology of the bowlers. So uh, that would benefit uh, Pakistan. Bowling inexperience in the fast bowling department. But they got pace and uh, these players have played a lot of uh, domestic cricket and they're coming with a good form. Uh, but I think uh, the amount of inexperience that they have in the fast bowling lineup, that's where if Afghanistan bat well in the first four or five overs, they can put them under pressure because having the natural ability to perform, that's a, that's a different thing. But uh, if the pressure is put straight away and you're playing international cricket, then you start worrying about it, defending yourself rather than looking to, to attack and take wickets. And that's where uh, if Afghanistan can get up to a flying start with bat in hand, they can certainly trouble Pakistan. You actually made a very good point. You know, Umar Gul being in the position in fast bowling being Afghanistan's uh, weakest link. Um, they are players in the current 
preparation camp uh, who probably haven't had that international exposure when Omar Gol was in the squad. Um, and looking at the um, weaknesses in that department, do you think we'll see, uh, you know, one or two, one or two new players uh, given an opportunity in this series? Uh, you know, obviously um, the World Cup is next year. Will Afghanistan take a risk or two, uh, uh, giving giving some young players an opportunity to test them? Uh, I don't think so because this is a very very important series. We came very close to beat uh, Pakistan. Uh, so I think this is a this is a golden opportunity to beat Pakistan, and I think they will go with the experience campaigners. Uh, I can understand Bilal Sami around around the scene has got the pace, uh, but uh, experience is required against a tough opposition. Uh, so I think they will uh, give him opportunity at, at the op at the right moment. Uh, in this series, uh, I don't think so because in this series the focus would be on uh, using the bowlers who could use the pitch better. It's about working with the pitch rather than you using your natural talent. Working with the pitch requires a certain amount of experience and, uh, and uh, the pitches at Sharjah will suit the likes of, uh, you know, Naveen Ulhaq, who takes the pace of the ball, or Fazal Akfaru, who's been around for quite some time and then they got plenty of experience. So uh, I think he's a good talent, Bilal Sami. Uh, he will be used at some point of time, but not in, not in this series because uh, Afghanistan need this win desperately. They came very close on many occasions, but to lift the spirit of the nation, and uh, this is the series uh, where you know, all the Afghan supporters, not only in Sharjah or UAE, but around the world, will be hoping that Afghanistan deliver one punching performance uh, so that they can lift the spirit of the nation uh, and at the same time, you know, boost their own confidence heading into the ICC One Day World Cup and later T20 World Cup in the Caribbean nations. Well, we'll hopefully discuss Afghanistan's final squad in more detail uh, in due course once announced. Uh, as you mentioned, um, Afghanistan, even they've lost all their games, but it has always been by the barest of margins. And uh, my last question to you is, if you had to pick a side and make a prediction, who do you think will um, end up on the winning side, winning the series? If Afghanistan play to their true potential, because they've got uh, plenty of players with the potential to do something extraordinary. In the bowling attack, they are absolutely fantastic, world-class bowl, bowling operators there. I think if Afghanistan play with freedom, the kind of freedom and aggression that they showed in the Asia Cup, Afghanistan has a realistic chance of beating Pakistan by two matches to one. Well, let's hope that happens and uh, thank you for your time today. Um, we'll definitely be discussing this throughout the series and um, expect some exceptional performances from both sides. As long as it's a competitive game, uh, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter, but if they you know, put up a good fight, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll take that as well. But yeah, uh, thank you, Devinder, for your time and uh, talk to you soon again. Thank you, Bashir. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you.